Accuracy and repeatability are really important, obviously, in, in uh, how I go about things in the workshop. And with digital readouts becoming super cheap and readily available, not so long ago, I, I put one on the outrigger of my slider. That's been a, a bit of a game changer, really. It's, it's made um, getting that uh, accuracy and repeatability way easier. And so ever since I've had that and been using it, I've been trying to come up with a way of uh, adding one to the rip fence. Not exactly a, a super easy task. You see the, the rip fence on my combination machine actually lifts off the table for the saw and you pop it on the opposite end of the machine uh, to use as the fence for the jointer. So the fact that you're taking it off and putting it back on uh, adds a little bit of complexity. But uh, on top of that, um, there's a gap in the table and the way the table pivots up um, to change from jointer to planar means that uh, the, the magnetic strip for the DRO has to be cut. There's no sort of way around that. And sure, I can get away without a digital readout on the, on the fence, but one thing that you need to work around with this machine, while it, it operates really, really well as a sliding table saw, as a rip saw, uh, it's a little less ideal. You know, the slider sort of sticks out this end here, uh, which means that any ripping is sort of leaning over here, and that's not that big a deal. But, you know, when you're adjusting your rip fence, you're sort of lining up uh, the fence onto the, the rule here in this little channel. And that's, that's fine for rip cuts up to about six or seven inches. And as soon as you go past that, you really need to, I mean, you can sort of lean over, that's fine to 10 inches, say. But then anything past that, you really need to be moving around here to be accurate and, and you know, line things up. And that's where the, uh, the digital readout really comes into its own because the, uh, the readout is here on the, on the fence and, you know, I'm literally just able to push it across to, to wherever I need to go. I can use the fine adjustment to dial things in, lock it down and away I go. So I'm not moving all around the place. So we'll just go through quickly how this sort of has worked. I've just mounted a, a little MDF box here on top of the, the cast iron part of the fence. Uh, and I used the, the hole that was already there to run everything through so I didn't have to drill anything there. The uh, cable for the digital readout that goes to the, the sensor ends up down here and I've got a little aluminum angle that I've mounted the sensor on and that little piece I just drilled and tapped uh, to mount that to the cast iron there. So that sits about a mil or so above the magnetic strip. And the magnetic strip fits perfectly in the little channel where the rule uh, is. So each time that the fence is taken off and then put back on, it needs to be zeroed in, I guess. And what I've done is, is just made up a, a little dowel that fits neatly into the hole in the table here. And then when I bring that, the fence up to that, I know that's exactly 86.1 millimeters from the side of the blade. Um, I just hold down the function button that gets me into the menu to then zero it because I keep zeroing it into 86.1, that's exactly what I've got reading here. I press that and then it's done. So I can take that out and know that this is, is super accurate. If I take this fence off and put the short rip fence on, I just do the same thing again because the, the, the extrusion is slightly different in its width. So the measurement obviously would be out if I just change that over without setting that up. 
Okay, well, I hope that if you're contemplating uh, putting a, a digital readout on any of your machinery, I hope this helps. If you'd like to see more of this sort of content and you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I'll have lots more content coming out and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.